everyone my name is Erica Matthews and thank you so much for coming back to my YouTube channel to watch another one of my fashion stylist tutorials. So I know you've clicked on this video because you want to follow me throughout my day of shooting for a commercial client. Now this video is going to follow the process you know the steps on how I was able to do that a little bit of behind the scenes but also it's going to highlight on the process of buying and returning clothing so if you really want to follow me and find out a little bit more stay tuned and keep watching she's giving us yoga so first and foremost i just want to say a huge thank you guys for all of your support all um, of your kind words and messages it is never missed it is appreciated i'm sending you guys lots of love and good vibes right back guys if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to my channel and press that bell so you can stay updated with any new content that comes out you'll be the first to know and also guys if you like this video do not forget to give it a thumbs up and also guys do not forget to share sharing is caring so i'm sure this can probably help someone that you know someone in the industry um refer them to any of the videos in my channel whatever it is but you know sharing is caring and also if you've got any questions in regards to this video or you have any other questions or any other you know tutorials you would like me to cover please do comment below but before you comment below with a question make sure i haven't already covered it in my tutorials there are so many videos i've created um so check them out guys invest in yourselves and do that so i'm really really excited to jump right in and get started so make sure you grab your pen and paper and let's go this shoe is different to others because you know other than like a test shoot or an editorial with a commercial shoe it's more based on the client so it's similar to like my uu shoot that i showed you guys this shoot that i done that i'm about to show you it was um a campaign so it's going to be campaign shots it's lookbook shots um e-commerce shots uh pack lookbook is the same as like packet shots so for this commercial client it's a hair client um they needed all of those sort of things done so step one really is about getting the mood board sometimes you're going to get a full-on mood board where they know exactly what they want and sometimes you're going to get one where they have like no idea what they want and you kind of have to you know listen and ask a few questions and kind of create a picture in your mind um i always ask clients you know have you got any inspo images even if they've got absolutely nothing created yet i've created a video on how to create a client clothing mood board and i kind of highlight on that as well so this is really linked with that so after you get the uh shoot mood board you're going to also get a mood board or some sort of form um, where it's going to tell you a bit about the models so the models that i have you can see i need all of their stats i need a clear picture of what they look like um so i can see their skin tone their body shape and you know all of those different sort of things so you've got what your client wants um, you need to now merge that with what you envision so I kind of create this type of mood board which I've shown you guys before um, but I create it I always make sure that I include stuff like color palettes I also split it up via the models that I'm using so I will put the models picture in the corner along with their stats again it's a reminder it's clear it's there um, and then the colour palettes to go with it. I also kind of give myself some sort of idea in terms of like how many looks are needed. And then also on that page, especially for this client, I've kind of hinted as well um, what the styling is for. 
so there's different types of hair that the model is modeling and that also plays a part in what type of clothing is needed say for example you've got like a huge afro and it's big curly hair you know you're going to want stuff that is really quite sparse on the shoulders so that the hair can really stand out as i'm kind of building up the different looks i'm looking at the model's skin tone i'm looking at their body shape i'm looking at what size sizes they are you know is their breast big is it small all these things can play a part in the pieces of clothing that you get and also sometimes when you don't necessarily have a model that's agency you might get size discrepancies models sometimes say that they are smaller than they are so that they will say that they're a size 12 and they're kind of not you you'll get to know with practice you'll get to kind of know and look at someone and be like hmm I think they're this size or I think that they're that size and also their measurements will tell you a lot as well I sometimes kind of get like multiple sizes when it comes to something like that what I would do then is literally just copy and paste or screenshot images from different stores and like pop it on that board I'll make sure that I put those pieces of clothing and the correct sizes that I need in the basket and that way i can kind of keep an eye on the price points and just also make sure that i'm able to kind of refer back to the clothing that i've put on the board without putting it in the basket or saving it you're gonna lose it and you're gonna have to search for it again so save yourself the hassle and do that so then this is step three now this is when you have finished your board and all you have to do now is uh, send it to the client so that they can basically approve it and give edits. So for me, I love um, creating my boards in pages. I think on the window, on a Windows it's um, PowerPoint. So something that I can easily copy and paste images to, anything like that whatever you choose to use it's great i'm not saying you have to use that but this is what i use and what i recommend and i always save my images in a pdf form this is easy to read you can have pages on pages in one document and when i send it to my client i really try and encourage them to give me feedback in terms of what they like sometimes you know you get people that are quite negative and they don't even mean it they're quite negative so all you're going to come back all they're going to come back to you with is i don't like this i don't like this i don't like this and sometimes it's really quite demoralizing especially when you spend like ages and hours um you know putting pieces together so it's really kind of asking them to pick up and pull pull out you know what do you love what what's really working for you because it might be a thing where they've asked for three looks for a campaign and you've picked maybe six seven looks and they might like actually four of them and that kind of means that you're already on the right track you've already got some solid looks that they love and all you would then need to do is maybe replicate and you know like branch out a little bit on what they already like other than that you've got to be prepared for any criticism so if they don't like something listen hear them out you know and really kind of just move on from there essentially you will be at the place where you've got enough looks you have put extras in your basket they love the board they love the pieces you're in this purchasing stage now that is your step four stage that purchasing stage so this is where you know finances will come into place i've done a really really helpful video for you guys in terms of understanding finances and the different ways to charge and the different ways to make sure that money is covered for you and you know all sorts of stuff like that so make sure you have a look but in this term you're gonna ask the client and I always try to ask this beforehand before I start doing the boards and you know all of that sort of stuff I'm gonna ask them do they have a clothing budget this needs to initially be in that email when you're getting the mood boards and all of that sort of stuff make sure you're asking you know you know what is your budget you're doing the money dance you know as I call it you know what is your budget you know do you have a clothing budget in place um 
you know are you able to cover any dry cleaning if any pieces are you know stained or damaged because when it comes to even like hair clients and stuff like that you can't always be on top of stuff you need to make sure that you're covered at the end of the day so make sure you're asking these important questions for this client i was buying and returning via credit card if you are going to be using a credit card do it responsibly make sure that you are taking into account that postage and packaging doesn't go straight back on to the card do what i do i always get like the royalty delivery and get a year sort of contract in terms of postage so i can save some money um but make sure you have that in mind so that when you get paid you can push that right back into your um, credit card when you're buying and when you're in this purchasing stage do not forget again make sure you get extras if something is sold out which has happened to me so many times i've had clients that take quite a long time to get back to me and pieces have sold out so just make sure you kind of just get like dupes of those pieces of clothing so if it's a pair of like white linen trousers just get another pair from a different brand which looks similar And then it's step five, which is all about the shoot prep. So in this stage, what I love to do is print off all of the mood boards that I've created so far. And then what I will do is I'll take the packages that have come or the shopping bags that have come and I will organize everything and put everything into piles. So what I've done is I've printed off the mood board and this allows me to then be able to organise all of this into categories like this. So what I would do is I would first go with this collection and through all of this sort of stuff I would find these looks that I've selected. Of course, my client only wants three looks, but as always, I always do extra looks. But I'm gonna find these, put them in a pile, and then put them with these two sheets, and that would be that collection. You know, you may find that you've done doubles of stuff, which happens to me quite often. Um, or well, you may find that pieces are missing. Maybe, you know, the shop has sent you a bit by mistake. This way it allows you to have time to see, you know, see what's going on. Another pointer, try and at least give yourself like two days before the shoot where you're actually buying and purchasing because that way if any mistakes are made at least you've got time to kind of rectify it also when that's done i know what the final looks are i know exactly what's come you you don't have to but i just send the final lookbook because sometimes pieces are swapped like i said things are sold out i send the final mood board to my client so that they have that i mean never underestimate the power of you know pacifying your client and then also lastly you're gonna pack your case and here is how i pack everything i've done this in my how to pack your suitcase video but yeah i literally just line everything up and then place the sheet on top sometimes your client will give you an itinerary in the call sheet which you get and with that you sometimes get the run through of what looks first or what looks last instead of having like a suitcase just full of loads of clothes and having to organize it on the shoot on the day save yourself the hassle sort before pack it in order this is <laughs> my ocd talking but pack it in order this way it's just more efficient you roll quicker, you get things done quicker, trust me. So this is all about the shoot day. I've done a great tutorial on mastering the photo shoot process, which kind of has a few steps in this, but I feel like it's a little bit more editorial based. However, 
I still do think that um, it's worth watching even in regards to this video. So when you go in, communicate with the team, obviously talk, network, say hi, but then get on to business, you know, start unpacking your case, pull things out, hang them up. And what I love doing is I love getting my masking tape and kind of just sticking uh, the boards on the wall and that way everything's in front of you. And also when you do that, you can kind of put everything in order, you know? And so you know exactly, you know, this is this look and this collection and it lines up with this on this rail and that right lines up with this on that rail, you know? Do that, it gives order. It really makes you look very professional to your client, trust me. So guys, it is the morning now and I am ready and waiting for my cab that's gonna take me to the studio. So yeah. This is the beginning of the day and I'm going to obviously show you as much as I can. Yeah, let's get started. I love to do is pull my client and once everything is hung I kind of just run through everything um, I kind of hint with what I feel personally will work whatever product you are shooting with whether it's hair um, you know like my other client hot water bottles a, a can food whatever it is make sure you look at it and you can kind of pick it up look at the texture um, hold up against the clothes you know you really kind of get a different vibe of beauty, just being able to see the product with the clothing and sometimes even just doing that things stand out things work better for me you know some of the hair pieces had blonde in it so I knew that I wanted to go with something a little bit more neutral so that the hair really kind of pops and that nothing really clashes and makes it look cheap and tacky so basically when that's done I kind of hint to my client and say you know I think this is gonna work this is why you know what is you, what is it that you think what were you thinking what's your vision tell me a little bit more about the customer tell me a little bit about more of what you envision and really kind of have a nice conversation with them and allow them to kind of open up to you and just share the vision and then art can bounce around ideas can bounce around and you really just kind of get a good vibe from doing that and when you've kind of gone through the different looks and spoken to your client then you can start steaming because you're going to ask them you know what look is first what looks second you know however many models you've got make sure you then in order steam all of their first looks all of their second looks this is if you're working on your own and also be prepared to do small fittings with models if you've got one that's available do fittings try on the pieces does this work does it not because what may happen is like what with my model my model my agency models actually smaller than what her sizes said so i was trying stuff on her and it was literally it was swallowing her up so i was having to pick something else so that meant i had to quickly steam something else and i'm gonna put the um details for that steam in the description below i've been using it for years now it never fails me it's amazing it's an investment i recommend you guys investing very good we get some complete profile ones with the hair all back as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. just turning completely. Yeah. Um, are we Erica? Yes, Someone my love. Ready in three, so this is her campaign. And then obviously, when your shoot's done, your client's happy, and it's a wrap. Pack away the clothes nicely. You don't have to put it in all of the uh, envelopes and sleeves. Just pack it away really nicely make sure it's covered, secure, whatever it is, and then you can go home. And then you've got step seven, which is the final step. 
So this is the processing returns sort of part of the process. So guys, it's all about packing up. So I am literally going through all of the little plastic sleeves and matching it up with the clothes and popping it back in. And then that way I can have everything sort of packed up and ready to post so that's my procedure and when I basically do this part I'm able to go through each piece of clothing and you know look at any stains um make sure that they're cleaned get them out make sure that tags are on yeah just make sure that the clothes are basically suitable to be returned and that's really what you need to focus on in this stage so you know even when you return clothes in a shop they look at it they have a look around you know, making sure that it's returnable. And that's what you need to do. You need to make sure that all pieces of clothing are in a state where it is sellable to somebody else. So what may happen is there might be tiny little marks of makeup. I sometimes use a little stain removal wipe, a little bit of warm water and vanish soap. And I kind of gently rub and buff the stains away and it literally takes it out instantly. Um, but with that, I kind of process the clothes, make sure that they are good. I make sure that any tags that are popped off, because sometimes tags are put in really terrible places where I have to pop tags off, I make sure that I'm putting it back on. And I've actually personally purchased a Kimball gun. And a Kimball gun is what a lot of stores use, and they, it allows you to put back on tags. And I've bought black tags, white tags, um, you can buy red tags, whatever tags that you need to buy. And I'm going to put the details for a Kimball gun in the description below so you guys can have that on hand. And then I'll take it to the post office or I take it back to the store, get my refunds up and running. And then once that's all done, that's when I usually sit down, um, I invoice my client and that tends to be the end of the job. So if you need any help, in terms of invoicing, make sure, making sure that you get paid on time. Make sure you head to my video on how to create an invoice because it saved me. And in fact, there's a lot of clients that pay you within 30 days. But with me, if I'm actually buying and returning myself, I actually require, personally, and I say this beforehand to my clients, I require payment between 7 to 14 days because say for example you've got several clients going and returns aren't paid to you straight away it takes at least like a week to get to you right sometimes shorter but about a week I say to them I need my money 7 to 14 days because I need to be able to purchase for my other clients and my money is now tied up in this job and that's how I actually managed to actually get paid sooner. And I also make sure that I put the fine print that if payment is late, you get a charge. You are pay you have to pay me extra. I make sure that this is all clarified to the client and you know all of that sort of stuff. So yeah, that is it. I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed it. I'm hoping that this can help you. I'm hoping that this can also open doors for you, of course. So do not forget, guys, subscribe, like comment below and share and I really do look forward to seeing you guys again in another one of my fashion size tutorials make sure that you guys are keeping safe make sure that you guys are putting your health first self-care first and yeah I look forward to seeing you guys in another video goodbye Turn your head a bit more, so. Turn off a bit.